Alright, what's up you guys? I'm Slash Demon of the Sword here doing another tutorial in C Sharp. This time it's how to make a beat pad. Now, this isn't going to be some advanced one you'll probably find on the iPad or Android tablets, but it's going to be one that you can make and edit yourself, you know, just to get around with boredom. Now, I would say the hardest part of the tutorial itself is actually finding the WAV files that you're going to need for this video. Now, I suggest downloading the FL Studios 10 software. The demo version works fine because that's what I use. Now, just make a beat, go to file and export it as a WAV file. It, the files that it exports are acceptable in C Sharp. They're high quality and best of all, they're free. Now, unless you already have your own WAV files, you can just do that. But once you got the files you need, go to Visual C Sharp Express Edition and start a new file. And it's going to be a Windows Forms application and call it whatever you want. But once you get it started, you're basically want to, going to want to get it to look something like this. You're going to want it to have four buttons, more if you wish, but four for this one. Each one labeled with the corresponding sound. Now, once you set that up, go over to its properties and go to the events. Scroll down till you find the key down and double click it. It'll open up and bring this. Oops, wrong one. Well, it doesn't matter. Make sure you also clicked on the button you're going to do this with. So, snare, hi-hat, go down to this, because we're going to need these. Now, just quickly do that for all four buttons as to save you time later so you don't have to go back into the design view. So once you've got all of those down, go up to the button one dot key down. Now, what you're going to want to do here is create an if statement. Oops. Now I'm just control K X this as to make it easier for me. Now if statement. Now inside the per inside the parentheses, you're going to want to put e dot key code equals keys dot s. It doesn't have to be the S key, but for me it is. Now before we proceed any further, go up to the top and where all these using statements are, type in using system.media. This will allow us to play the audio inside of C Sharp. Once you've done that, go back to the if statement and inside the curly braces type sound player, snare, in my case, because you're going to want to name it, have that equal a new sound player. Parentheses, and then under that you're going to want to put snare.play. Now, inside the parentheses of the sound player, you're going to want to put its file directory. So you're going to want to go at followed by two quotation marks. And in those quotation marks, you're going to want to put its directory. So C, oops, yeah, C backslash, in my case, it's users. Well, Esperanza, my documents, wave, files, and then the name of this file, which is snare, and then the dot wave extension. Now, your file directory could be different than mine. Actually, it should be different. Basically, you're going to go to the C drive, and then from the C drive, you're going to go to the users folder. Then inside the users folder, <clears throat> you're going to go to the folder called Ungua Esperanza. Then inside there, you're going to go to the My Documents, from the Documents, the WAV files, and you're going to look for this file called Snare. Now, you're going to have to put in the .wav extension yourself if it's not there. And if it is, you're still going to have to type in .wav. Now, once you got this all working out, just go ahead and pre press the Run. Run debug the application and press Test. If all goes accordingly, you should hear the sound in either the microphone, headphones, or speakers, or whatever you're using. Now, do this for the rest of them. A simple way to do this is to just copy and paste the code, change the letters around a bit, and then change the name. So this would be I have. Alright, I'm going to just quickly <clears throat> do that for all these keys here. This one is clap. And then this last one is kick. Alright, so 
even though you've done all of this, when you go to run the application, you're going to notice that it only works for one of those. So the only one that will actually be functioning is whichever one has the current focus on it. Now we're going to change that so, whoops, forgot that one. We're going to change it so that with each time you press the button, the focus changes as well. So in order to do this, go up to the top one, go to button one dot key down and under that, under the if statement, we're going to want to put three else if statements. This is going to be else if e dot key code equals <coughs> keys dot d. We're going to have it do button two dot focus. Else if e dot key code equals keys dot f. Button three dot focus. And then same thing for the last one. Else if e dot key code equals keys dot g button four dot focus. Now you're gonna want to do this for each one of the button key downs. So same thing in the last one under the button two dot key down, you're gonna want to put else if e dot key code equals keys dot D no keys dot G just go to button four dot focus or whichever button you're currently going to use. Now in the end result will look something to the likes of this. You got the if statements and all the else if statements and when everything is set and stone and inputted by clicking each one of the corresponding keys, it will automatically focus it. Now, the downside to this is that you're going to have to hit the key twice. One to actually set the focus and the other one to actually play the sound. I don't know how to fix this, but at least it's better than how you started off. I'm Slash Demon of the Sword, and this is my tutorial. Now, before I end this, though, I just have this great idea. No, never mind. I'm not going to do it. Alright, so, yeah. Goodbye. All right, so on second thought, I just decided to, you know, do that great idea I just had. So when you downloaded FL Studios 10, you're going to want to open it. Now, I feel like I didn't explain this good enough at the beginning of the tutorial. So I'm going to just quickly go over what I meant. You got this right here. What I meant was you just place down a little square pad, go over to File, Export, and then WAV. Click on it. You'll just have to go through the process and then it'll bring you to this other thing where you just click on export. Now I just didn't feel like I explained that too good in the beginning. I felt like I just briefly went over it. So I just wanted to quickly get that out of the way as to not have any questions asked. 